Right, welcome back to another episode of the GCN Tech Clinic, where I aim to try and solve your bike-related problems. So if you've got one, leave it for me down there in the comments section below, and I'll do my utmost best to try and solve it. So with no further ado, let's crack on with the first one this week. Comes in from Troy Collett, who is very regular, actually, in the comments, uh, who says, Hi, John, I have a Focus with Shimano RS500 cranks. Would a 4i105 left-hand side power meter fit it? Troy, not a problem at all. So just to actually make everyone aware, the RS500 crank set doesn't actually sit within a group set itself. So it's not part of the Dual Ace family, the 105, the Altegra, anything like that. Standalone component that can be mixed and matched in to work. Uh, now the good thing is it shares all the same technologies as those aforementioned group sets. So that means it uses the Holotech 2 standard. So it's not a problem at all. You can whip off whatever left-hand crank you've got on there and put that 105 4i one on. Just make sure when I say whip off whichever one you've got on there, actually whip off you know, and make note of the actual crank length, because obviously you want to put the same crank length back on. Okay, next up is Emil Fitzner. Now, Emil says, Hi John, I'm looking up grading my time trial bike from 10-speed Ultegra to 11-speed Ultegra R8050. I run it one bike, so I don't need a front derailleur. Uh, what other parts, other than the cassette, chain and rear mech, do I need to change? Specifically, do I need to change cables and or aero bar shifters? Right, Emil, um, I'm not sure what type of cables you're talking about there. So brake cables, if you're lucky, you can reuse them, but we're talking about DI2 here, so I think you're probably talking about those cables. Yes, you can reuse those cables. Uh, the actual only Shimano DI2 group set that uses a different cable standard is the original Jura Ace 10-speed one. So going from 10 to 11-speed Ultegra is absolutely fine. Uh, as for the actual shifters themselves, they will work fine too, because the brain of the setup that determines how many speed the actual uh, well, gearing setup you've got on your bike is, is actually built in within the rear derailleur, not the shifter buttons. They simply send a signal to and from the derailleur Alias, rather than actually uh, determining the speed of the bike. Right, next up, Al Francis, who says, Hey John, I'm riding an Arcid Zero Mark II by Sid Composites. How do I determine the length of the carbon fork steerer tube expander? Right then, Al, the easiest thing to do simply would be to remove it from the steerer tube and measure it. But I always tend to go, actually, for the deepest one possible. So here I've got one in my hand. It's fairly deep. You can even get them a little bit longer there. But... Interestingly, you can even get them shorter too. So real weight weenies out there, they go for really short ones. But I tend to go for something like this because it actually increases the strength of the fork steerer a little bit when you actually clamp the stem around it. But ultimately, you don't want to be talking it up too much. It doesn't make too much of a difference. It's just something that's always there in the back of my mind. Right, next up we've got Maxim. Uh, Maxim says, Hi John, after a local bike shop changed the bearings in my Fulcrum Racing Zero front wheel, I can't get any more nice smooth rotation without any side play. The local bike shop said they've used a bit more of a solid Shimano grease. Is this okay or should I change the grease immediately? Right, Maxim, it's fairly difficult to answer this one without actually seeing the wheel in person there. But like you say, you are using a pair of Fulcrum Racing Zeros, which actually have uh, adjustable angular contacts. So it's kind of like cup and cone bearings. So you can actually adjust the bearings. Now, uh, trying to get those back to factory correct can sometimes be quite a bit of a pain in the backside. And even for me, I'm not a huge fan of having to do it because I'm so, so, so particular about it. I mean, I've got a pair of track wheels from the 80s and I don't think the bearings have ever been changed in that. And I dent because I'm just worried I can't get them back to the silky smoothness of them. You say about the Shimano grease, if it's the stuff I'm thinking of, it's kind of a, a green colour, almost sort of a, a, a luminous in effect. And that stuff is really good. It's my favourite type of grease for anything actually on a bike. So bear in mind that that is new, so it will be a little bit sticky, but after use it will free up a little bit. But I can't give you the exact answer you're looking for, but I'd give it a little bit of extra time. As long as the bearings aren't, you know, full of side to side play and they're not graunchy or stiff, then just try and wait for that grease just to free up a little bit, trying to get a bit more liquidy if you like. Right, next up we've got Greg Genner who says, Hi John, I had a puncture on my gravel bike about a week ago. The tubeless sealant plugged up the hole after a few seconds of spurting. Should I take the tyre off and patch it from the inside or is the sealant good enough to be a permanent fix? 
Right, Greg, it should be all right for quite some time there. But like you say, you could take off the tire and put a patch on. Sometimes, though, uh, you do run into a few problems there, that those boots or those patches don't stick that well on the inside if you've got a load of tubeless sealant, which is kind of got stuck on there and it doesn't give a good surface for adhesion. So providing, of course, you've got the time and patience to get away all of that tubeless sealant, then yeah, go ahead and put a boot on there. But think about it this way, the tubeless sealant has done its job and it should last for quite some time. Okay, next up is a question from Matt who says, I have a vintage Bianchi from the 50s, 10 speed. Uh, I was hoping to upgrade the group set and switch to index shifting. I've no clue where to start and how to narrow down what group set is compatible. All parts a Campagnolo. Oh, Matt, lucky chap. Right. You are gonna run into a few problems here if you're searching for indexed gears. The reason being that five speed rear end, or so 10 speed, because you've got a double chain set at the front. Generally, that would have been, from memory, anyway, it does depend on the actual exact era, 120 millimeters width. So the actual dropouts, the overlock nut distance diameter. So if you measure between them, it's gonna be roughly 120 millimeters. However, six and seven speed, that went up to 126 millimeters, and then eight speed onwards, 130. All is not lost though, my friend, because you can actually kind of cold set the uh, rear ends outwards a little bit. And well, you're only looking for a very small amount, but you need to be very, very careful with that. And you are gonna run into other problems, such as trying to find a down tube uh, index gear lever that can mount onto a band on adapter that's suitable for the frame diameter size and all of these things. I, this is a project, to be honest, I would love to get involved with with you because I love to try and solve problems like that. But take it along to a local bike shop, the sort of one which has wooden drawers underneath the desk and full up of old bits. The sort of place you can go into and say, have you got something for a 1983 uh, Pinarello Treviso? And they're, oh yeah, I have actually, I'll just go up and get it. Off he goes, comes back with it. That sort of place is where you want to go because they're going to try and find these solutions for you and have the experience as well to actually try and reset that rear end. If not, go to a local frame builder, try and find one, ask around people on old vintage bikes too because those are the people who obsess over these details. Good luck with it. Send in pictures of the finished item for the bike vault. Right, next up we've got Corentin who says, Hi John, firstly, thanks for all the amazing mechanical advice. And secondly, a few months ago I got injured, hit by a car. Sorry to hear about that. Uh, and therefore I can't ride my bike for an undetermined period of time. This is getting really sad. Uh, do you have any advice on what to do to keep it in mint condition, my bike that is? Oh, I also heard there was an ideal tire pressure when storing my bike. Is that true? It's obviously another bike from the one from the crash because that one is not usable anymore. Well, I'm really quite sad about this, but okay, you're all right, that's the main thing. One bike isn't all right, but the other one you wanna take good care of. So importantly, wash it, dry it, lubricate it, cover it up. But before doing all of that, or after you've done all that, before you cover it up, go ahead and put about 70 to 80 PSI in the tyres if you're using, say, 23 or 25 mil tyres. You will lose a little bit of pressure over time, but don't worry, just go back to it periodically and just put a little bit more in there. The reason I say that is you're going to try and keep the tyres round and the sidewalls aren't going to start cracking or perishing, anything like that, when you have the weight of the bike. Even though the bike could well be a super light bike, you're still putting a bit of weight on there. And believe me, after a period of time, they can start to crack on the sidewalls. Uh, also, keep it somewhere not too hot and not too cold. Too hot and everything's going to become dried out and sticky and too cold, well, you could risk a little bit of corrosion there. And well, fast recovery, I guess. That's all I can say on that one. Right then, next up we've got ourselves Jack42 Frost or Jack42 Frost. Don't know, either way, Jack Frost. Right, Jack Frost says, I have a brand new secondhand hand DeRosa. A brand new second hand. I'm confused on that bit, but Jack Frost, I will carry on. Uh, it's running a short cage Campagnolo record nine speed titanium derailleur. I'm starting to drool a little bit. The gearing is a little on the old fashioned style. What is the best way to lower the gearing without blemishing the beautiful group set? Right, DeRosa. Beautiful bikes. Campagnolo record nine speed titanium, beautiful too. So you don't want to go ahead and start wrecking things, changing things, all that. I get what you mean. I think that those nine speed uh, rear derailleurs on it, they only accommodate, accommodated rather, a 26 tooth lowest sprocket, which on modern bikes seems pretty are pretty big really because most bikes are running a 28 cassette. So what you could do to keep that and try and keep the looks and everything without changing, putting something modern on there that isn't really gonna look the part, 
go ahead and buy. This is something I always recommend, probably once a week or once every couple of weeks on the Tech Clinic, a Duralia hanger extender. Get one in a really subtle color so no one can really tell. And all I'm gonna do, bolt onto your existing dropout, so the existing Duralia hanger, and then you're gonna attach your Duralia into it. It's just gonna drop it about 20 millimeters or so, and that's gonna give you enough so you can put a cassette on there with some lower gearing, and ultimately it's not gonna ruin the aesthetics of what I reckon is probably a beautiful bike. So go ahead, do that, send in a picture for the bike vault and it'll get super nice, probably. Right, next up we've got ourselves Dylan Murphy. In fact, penultimate one this week. Uh, hey John, inherited a very nice carbon Marin, but with a flat handlebar. I want to convert it to drop bars. Is there any reason why this wouldn't work? For example, are geometries different with flat bar road bikes? Whoa, Dylan, a popular one this one, a flat bar to drop bar conversion. Yeah, generally anything with a flat bar tends to have a more relaxed geometry, so it's not gonna be quite as racy for you. Something to consider too is that the head tube on it is gonna be a little bit bigger and the top tube is probably gonna be a bit longer than on a road bike. The reason being flat bar bikes tend to have a shorter stem these days. Back in the early days of flat bar bikes, like mountain bikes, they used to have big 130 mil stems. Not anymore though. So if you are gonna go ahead and put some uh, bars on there, some drop bars, you are gonna need probably quite a shorter stem uh, and probably something quite flat too to actually try and negate some of that big old head tube that you could have on there. Maybe you haven't got a big head tube on there. Either way, you are gonna have quite a bit of fun on this bike. It's not gonna be the raciest thing on the roads, but like I said, you're gonna have some fun times. So go ahead, submit it to the Screw Riding Upgrades Buy Upgrade section. And the final one this week comes in from Lido 1989 or Lido, I don't know. Uh, I currently run 10-speed Shimano and want to upgrade to ETAP. Red ETAP 11-speed is 100 euros cheaper than Force ETAP access. Uh, it would make more sense to go for the cheaper red, but I'm worried that at some point there won't be any parts if something breaks. But for Force, I need to change my hubs. Which is the better choice? Can of worms opened, uh, six of one, half a dozen of the other. That's a good old fashioned English saying, which is kind of, well, maybe you should do this or you could do that. But this is what I personally would do. I would actually go for the newer uh, force because the reason being, you don't want to have to start stockpiling loads of spare parts, like you say, in case something breaks and after sales support isn't there. So that's why I'd go for it. Ultimately, we're all having to sort of follow the path that the manufacturers want us to take because after all, they're releasing new products and they aren't gonna support everything forever. That's my honest opinion on that one. Right, I do hope I've been able to help answer and solve your problem this week. If I have, well, give it a big thumbs up. If I haven't, give it a big thumbs up. And if I haven't, well, resubmit it and maybe I'll get around to it. I get loads and loads of them, so please do be patient. Leave it down there in the comments section. Also, remember to check out the GCN shop at shop.glo globalcyclingnetwork.com. Heaps and heaps of stuff for you to check out. And now for two more cracking videos, click just down here and just down here.